Hello everyone, this is Conquering History Games here, and today I'm going to be doing another Top 5 Kaiserreich video where I talk about my 5 favorite Kaiserreich countries based on region. This is something that subscribers have asked of me in the past, so today we are going to be focusing on South America. And the first thing I want to say is that South America is, I think, the best location for anybody who's new to Kaiserreich to start because it brings to the table the idea that South America actually can be interesting. Anybody who's played vanilla... Hearts of Iron 4 knows that basically nothing ever happens in South America, and it's really, really boring, uh, which I guess is sort of historically accurate, but yet it goes too far in that nothing happens. Anyway, let's we're going to go right into it, and I'm ranking these, as usual, not on how strong the countries are. It's also going to be, although that is a factor, it is also going to be based on what I think the replayability is of the uh, country and just uh, how viable it could be uh, as, a, as a country and, and just generally how fun it is and things like that. So anyway, we're going to start with number five. Number five is actually Chile or uh, the Texas of the South as it more properly should be known. Uh, it, this is a country that I actually do have a campaign video of up on my channel. Uh, the one of the things let's first talk about its strengths. Its strengths are its focus tree. You cannot spend any time on this political stuff until you are about four years into the game. So that just leaves you with your air, navy, and army tree. So it's uh, re it's relatively easy to get a good professional army established uh, so that you can go to war with La Plata uh, because you're probably going to be fighting a defensive war against them since La Plata is going to be coming for most of South America. But you are strong enough a country. I'd say you're the third strongest country in South America behind La Plata and Brazil. Uh, so you are in a position if you want to take some of these northern uh, South American areas. You also have the ability to join the Third International, although you cannot do that until 1940, but usually the Third International will have won or lost the Second World War by then. So if they're still around, you can join that incredibly powerful uh, faction. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. Not too much in the way of variety, though. You really only have three different political ideologies you can select, either Totalist, Syndicalist, or Radical Socialist, and those even only separate into two different directions. So uh, not a whole lot going on although you can make some really great tanks you are behind on research but you do start with three slots uh, overall Chile pretty solid choice for um, any South American countries and, and something else I want to say is all of these South American countries are very close to one another as far as um, how how strong they are and how much I recommend them so let's move on to number four number four would be Peru Peru is another country that does not make any political decisions for a while, but it does have the ability to absorb Bolivia very quickly, so it can, uh, while not become a major power, it can become somebody who is in a position to fight some of these, the big ABC countries down here of South America. There is also um, an ability to go national populist under them, which is, as of now, as of version 0 0.5, is honestly the only truly viable way to go because it opens opens up the Peruvian Brotherhood and many other effects here, which culminate uh, with the national focus Hispanidad Imperial, which get, reduces by 30% your land, air, and naval doctrine. Research time gives you 0.2 daily political power and increases your division recovery rate and gives you 200 political power, or in other words, two jumps on the economy law, conscription law, or trade law um, branches of your law and government. So. Uh, one of the things that holds Peru back right now is that it's only viable. Oops, it's only viable if you go national populist. But uh, South America is supposed to be getting a revamping down the line. It does have a nice big focus tree. All of the tree, all, every single country in South America has a has a large focus tree. Uh, you also can basically get claims on every one of your neighbors. Uh, so it allows you to grow. It allows you to core. You are able to join La Plata's faction, but you can leave it because you are not the faction leader, so it's it's pretty good. All right, number three is Colombia. Colombia starts as social democratic, but uh, it can go in a few different directions here following its elections in 1938. As you can see, they run a big range from going national populist to being liberal to being conservative to being so much more. Uh, all of these are viable in their own way. 
you have the ability to either create an Andean pact where you can, you and the rest of these northern, smaller South American countries can form a pact to uh, curb the aggression of either Brazil or La Plata, or you can just absorb them all and create grander, uh, you know, El Gran Colombia once more. Uh, lots of interesting industry uh, choices here, things that increase your factory output, reduce your consumer good factory. The only reason I do not rate this higher, even though Colombia does have a lot of replayability factor, certainly much more than Chile or Peru does, is that I feel it's industry, it just takes a little bit too long to get up and running, and uh, it, it's really hard to make Colombia a real power on the world stage. Now, number two is La Plata. La Plata is actually the country that I recommend most to people for the, that are new to Kaiserreich for their first playthrough. The thing that you have to understand in South American countries is that in Kaiserreich, they do take a little while before that they, uh, they can get up and running, uh, which is true of countries all over the world in Kaiserreich, but especially in South America, you are playing a much slower game here. Now, as La Plata, you are forced into a slow game because of the quenched expansionism effect that you have, uh, because in their lore, they have just recently absorbed Paraguay and Uruguay, and uh, you, according to your focus tree, it is not until you have integrated all of these areas and uh, uh, removed the national spirit quenched expansionism that you will be able to claim Southern Chile and Upper Peru and Brazil and things like that. So... Uh, there are quite a few focuses here, so it's going to take you a few years before you can go to war. That doesn't even take into account that you may want to work on your industry or your military as far as national focuses go. Doing a game as La Plata allows you also to just take a look at what the international scene is. La Plata also does not have very much of a replayability factor because they cannot... Um, change their national leader and they cannot change their political party for almost a decade by which point you should have taken over all of South America already anyway uh, but it is uh, it's a very strong country probably militarily the strongest South American country unless Brazil does its job right uh, uh, and it's very it's very one-dimensional in that it doesn't have replayability, but I think it's excellent for beginners, and I think sometimes it's nice, even in Kaiserreich, to just play a country that's very simple, where all you're doing is taking over all South America, and then maybe later in the game you can attack Mexico and the United States if you feel up to the challenge. And finally, number one, I mean, what else was it going to be? Once again, Brazil. Brazil is my favorite uh, country here in... South America for Kaiserreich, you begin as social conservative, but you do have an election coming up, after which uh, there will be a civil war, and you have many different directions you can go in where the you can become a uh, national populist, you can be radical socialist, you could go with Vargas uh, and the paternal autocrat slash uh, authoritarian democrats, but you, you, you can go a little more centralized here, or you could be democratic, although I don't think I've ever seen the AI take this route with Brazil. But uh, there's so many options. You you do have a decent amount of resources. Uh, you are eventually going to fight La Plata. You can easily destroy these northern countries here as long as they don't um, begin to unite against you. But even then, if you've already taken out La Plata, you're going to be steamrolling. There's tons, of, uh, there's tons of replayability here because of the different political parties. But not only the differences in the political parties, the differences in your industry. So this is more than just uh, having a different, uh, a different uh, color and logo here. It actually can fundamentally change how your industry develops itself. Uh, able to play defensively, able to play offensively, has a whole tree dedicated just to what ha is going to happen after you defeat Argentina, and in itself is also different depending on what sort of political party you have in Brazil. Uh, definitely could take over all of South America, and then with time be able to go over and grab some African colonies, or you can push northwards against the United States. All of these... Um, South American countries, they do get slow starts, but the longer the game goes, the stronger they themselves can become, and you definitely can get to a point where you're able to contend with the big boys. Uh, also uh, has the ability to uh, form different factions. You can form factions with, uh, with uh, Bolivia, with Chile, and things like that. Uh, and I mean, yeah, just look at the size of this freaking focus tree. Uh, 
very good. None of them, I mean, I wouldn't say any of these are my, in my top 10 even uh, overall Kaiserite countries, but if you're looking for the equivalent of Newbie Island in Crusader Kings 2, you cannot go wrong anywhere down here in Brazil. I mean, uh, in South America. See, there is no South America. There's only greater Brazil. Uh, and also, remember that Paraguay and Uruguay have uh, folks trees of their own, and so does uh, Rio Grande del Sul, so the more you know. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm conquering history games. Let me know which region of the world you want to do next. What are your top five Kaiserite countries in South America? And subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you're always notified whenever a new guide or video goes up, and I'll see you in the next one.